Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray. And today I'm joined by my fabulous, fantastic co-hosts, Ricardo Martinez and Jerry. That's right, boys and girls. He's back to ask the awkward questions that me and Ricardo don't want to ask. Um, and today we are interviewing from Bitcoin startup Bitkippy. I think that's how you say it. Bitkippy, Bitkippy. Yeah, Bitkippy, uh, correct. Bitkippy. Uh, Mr. Enrico Zolocci. I think I said that correctly. Correct. Probably not. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Nailed it. Two in a row. Uh, so yeah, how are you doing today, Enrico? I'm doing well. Thanks a lot for having me and uh, hello, everyone. Nice. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. Uh, and I guess I'll, I'll kick off the conversation by asking you a question, surprisingly enough. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll go back to the, the very beginning, as I like to do. Um, so obviously, you're working on Bitkippy at the moment, and we'll talk about that, I imagine, very shortly. Um, but before then, um, what is your kind of Bitcoin story? Because obviously, it's a Bitcoin-based company. Uh, what were yes. you doing before it? How did you discover it? How how's it all developed kind of from from there? What's the, what's your so, past? Yeah, absolutely. So look, it's uh, super simple. I mean, uh, we're just uh, two very uh, simple guys, and uh, and uh, we we got uh, very passionate about uh, Bitcoin and the implication that uh, the technology has. And you know, I mean, uh, we are two at the moment. So myself and uh, the co- uh, my, uh, my co-founder uh, Alessandro, who simply one summer, I think, uh, three years ago, two years, uh, a little bit more than two years ago, contacted me and said, you know, uh, it's uh, every time my father wants to buy uh, Bitcoin, it's very complex, and uh, you know, uh, I don't, uh, I, I, I really, I really cannot uh, imagine that there's no, you know, simple. Uh, non-custodial Bitcoin only way to you know to, to buy and uh, for people that are just simply passionate and they want to stack uh, uh, stack value in this way. So um, that's uh, that's when we started and we said okay we have, we have a problem out there so let's try to to solve it. Uh, our background, uh, as you asked uh, about uh, about the background, I mean we were both worked and we met actually working for uh, a, you know IT consulting company. So basically, we are in the technology industry, and uh, and yeah, I mean, we 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 kicked it off, and uh, and a few years later, let's say, uh, we are here in this uh, in this uh, in this adventure. Gotcha, cool. Okay, so you kind of identified, uh, you guys were IT guys, identified a problem that yourselves yeah. and I think it's your your, your co-founder's father had, and then exactly. just thought, let's do it, let's uh, let's build that kind of. Yeah. Is it something that you did on the side whilst you're working at first? On the side. Uh, yes, right. Yes, on the side, gotcha. totally on the side. It was a project, and that's also why it took us. Uh, we ob- honestly, we would have loved, you know, uh, for it to take uh, less time to go to go to market, if you want to say it this way, uh, but. Uh, but uh, it took some time because we really did that uh, in uh, our free time. So it has been at the moment, and that's a little bit the beauty of it, is just me and my co-founder, and, it's, and it has been only our time and our investment. So we are not, you know, we are fully owning the company and uh, we have not, uh, you know, we have not so far uh, agreed to any external investor. So we are, we are working on our own, yes, in our free time, yeah. Enrico? You yes. guys are based in Switzerland, correct? Correct. That's correct. Accurate. Are yes. you guys in, in the uh, Crypto Valley? Uh, depends. What do you define Crypto Valley in Switzerland? Uh, <laughs> With, Zug? Uh, like I've always heard that no, Zug is like no, the headquarters. Okay. So yeah, yes okay. and no. I mean, uh, that, on that I is slightly. I would I would uh, bring a different perspective. So I don't know if in Zug they call themselves the Crypto Valley, but actually there are several places in Switzerland where uh, a lot of startups in the Bitcoin space develop. You know, and uh, one of them, it's uh, Zoo probably uh, for many different reasons. And then there's another one, which is a very big community is in Neuchâtel, where we are based. And then there, which is another canton, basically. And then there is a, another strong community in Zurich, actually, where you have a lot of other startup types. Uh, or, you know, it's so, so if, if Crypto Valley is Zug, no, we're not in the Crypto Valley, but there, are, there is a strong ecosystem of, uh, of uh, Bitcoin startups in Neuchâtel and in Zurich as well. I guess like, because you guys are based, uh, yeah, in, in Swiss, and like, is, is that where the company is actually registered or do you guys go for like the whole Liechtenstein? That's it, Liechtenstein? No, 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 no it's like, uh, so, 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 let me clarify this point. Very good question. So, 
uh, both myself and Alessandro, we are living in Switzerland for the past uh, 12 years, even though we are both Italian, okay? So, so that's, that's an important point. We, we have not uh, located the company in Switzerland because of any, you know, specific uh, uh, strange reason. It's just we were here and we created the company here. So it's an Italian, I mean, we are both Italian nationality, but, but we are living in Switzerland since ever. So we just built it where we were. Uh, yeah, oh, to reply to a question. And yes, it's true that, because I think you have asked about Liechtenstein. So uh, it is true that uh, one of the broker that we leverage, that they are, uh, they use a, um, a bank that is in Liechtenstein. Um, but they also use a bank that is in Switzerland. They have actual, actually multiple banks they rely on uh, uh, to, to receive the, the funds. Gotcha. But, but you guys, your company, like BitGippy itself, is registered mm -hmm. in Switzerland. Correct. It's registered in Switzerland, in the canton of Neuchâtel, to be precise. And the actual, let's say, legal name of the, the legal entity is called Keepy Technologies. But that's just, uh, you know, the company that owns BitGippy as, mm -hmm. as, a, as a product. Because why that? Because we don't want to limit ourselves to the type of services and products that we want to that we want to build. So, but but that's for sure one, and it's the only one for the moment in our our of course beloved uh, Bitkeeping. So yes, we are incorporated in Neuchâtel, Switzerland. Confirmed. Uh, pardon my ignorance, but w what does Kipi mean? Uh, Kipi means uh, revolution in Hawaiian. <laughs> it's a it's a, it's a, it's a long story. We were maybe too drunk when we created the name. <laughs> no, but it's a it's a it's a long story. But yes, we we thought you know uh, Bitcoin revolution, and that we were thinking about it. And uh, a friend of uh, different this friend of mine like uh, why? So we said okay, let's look it up. I mean, very very simple, stupid story. Sorry, <laughs> we don't have like a beautiful story behind our names. I guess so. Bitkeepy, like to talk about what it is, especially for people listening. Um, yeah. And my understanding of, of the application uh, is it's mobile application. Uh, it's very simple, straightforward, automated buys, uh, straight to self custody of Bitcoin only. I think 10 euro minimum, uh, I believe. Um, and so, like, <clears throat> essentially, what, it, what it's done beautifully is like, hey, here's an issue. Uh, here's the solution. We're not going to just bedazzle you with tons of shit. It's like, exactly. this is the solution. It's yeah. simple. That's the sort of thing I love. Like I uh, yeah. big into like having like that kind of, because obviously otherwise you can really obfuscate things and get really complex and, and customers yeah. don't know this way. It's like, I want this, I get this. Um, yes. Are you guys like Europe, Europe based, obviously you can serve Europe. Does that include the UK have interest? Uh the list of available, the list where BitKeepy as a service is available is out there and on our website. It does not include UK as a matter of fact. I, I should say no is the best answer because of course you could use BitKeepy like uh, uh, from the UK, but uh, for instance, we don't support uh, uh, the, the currency and uh, also most of the banks over there we cannot serve as well. So, uh, so the answer is no, but we're working on it and we'll expand the service, of course, as we, as we continue working on it. So the answer is no for the moment. That's the, yeah, fair. I mean, not surprised really. Sorry, Jerry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I saw on your website that you said no verification needed, which is no. It, to me personally, for most people who are into crypto, it sounds like a buzzword. You don't know, no KYC, it's, it's very yeah. dreamy, yeah. you know. So how does that work? Especially, you know, once, once you consider yes. that, you know, regulations in, you know, the West and Europe specifically are very yeah. similar. So that's the question that, uh, that's the, the question that everyone uh, wants to know about. So uh, first of all, um, uh, it's important to know a couple of things. So um, we, as you said, we wanted to keep it very simple, right? So we wanted to say, okay, we have this problem. We create a service and that's it. We, we are no you know, financial advisor, we are no uh, investor consultants, we are not a bank, we are not a financial intermediary, we are just a technology service that, allow, that gives you access to this type of uh, uh, you know, way of, of storing value. And in doing that, so in doing that, we have to do that, uh, being an official legal entity in Switzerland, fully respecting the regulation. So to reply to your question, the point is the following, how does it work? In Switzerland, there is a fundamentally favorable context for uh, Bitcoin. And uh, Swiss authorities, they, they do not require a heavy weight uh, K 
KYC process, you know, uh, in order for you to perform transactions up until a, a threshold. This threshold today, uh, bold, <laughs> bold today, is 900 uh, euro per day, per period of 20, oh, 24 hours, or uh, one, or of course, Andre, uh, I mean, the equivalent in, uh, in Swiss francs. Okay, um, so here, so which is 1,000 Swiss francs to be precise over a period of 24 hours. So today, the regulator does not require an heavy uh, KYC process for that. Uh, they do not require you to scan, you know, your identity uh, documents uh, nor any other information. So, so that's why we can operate without uh, KYC uh, in uh, in Switzerland. So the assumption is that um, to the regulators that your customers are not going to go above the ex the, one out, the threshold. Yes. So is 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 that threshold applicable on the app on your app or is just you know is it applicable for customers on your app or it's just you know something that we know that you know or you're just assuming customers won't since it's a DCA you know app mm -hmm. you know customers are yes. comfortable with just purchasing hundred dollars two hundred dollars you know yes. maximum in a day. What if a customer you know, wanted to go beyond that? Exactly. So if a customer wants to go beyond that, BitKP would suggest uh, other uh, very uh, valuable partners or services, but we will not do that. And also, yes, the threshold is enforced in the application. If you try to purchase more, it's not uh, going to work. It's just it's enforced in the application and in the old chain that is behind the application. So everything that is the processes that, uh, that we have to follow. So, so it will not be possible. So we need oh. to suggest, an, of course, I have to elaborate a little bit more on this because this is very interesting. Of course, uh, this, I mean, is probably the best proof that uh, we are in there for the love of the technology and, and for opening up this technology to everyone. Because, of course, not accepting uh, higher amounts uh, makes our fees uh, in uh, absolute value. Uh, of course, much uh, much smaller than potential. I mean, because potentially, if you catch uh, an hundred k uh, transaction, of course, the fee is uh, what you could do with. Uh, of course, I don't know hundred users uh, with much smaller amount, right? Uh, with one k each. But the thing is, but the thing is, we are not there for. We are really not there for the moment for the for the for the fees. We are there to provide this service and to open up this technology to the public. That's the really the mission of the of the company. Is BitKeepy just to purchase Bitcoin, or can you also sell your Bitcoin back for Swiss francs? I love this question. So a lot of our users asked us, "So where is the sell button?" <laughs> but uh, um, uh, and I have to be honest, I'll give you a little bit of a sneak peek here. In the very first version that we didn't publish, we had the sell button, so we had the sell feature, but we removed it. Uh, in the first version of the application is not excluded we are going to bring it back but at the moment we wanted to focus only on uh, dca so only on ability to purchase and not uh, ability to sell there are many platforms that can allow you i mean you can simply you know you could simply transfer your bitcoin everywhere else and sell uh, not a problem for us but that's not something we cover at the moment why, why, why is that? Why is the rationale behind removing removing the sell button? You know, why? <laughs> why no, that? no, it's just because no, it's a matter of prioritization. To be honest, so it's really a matter of prioritization. We we thought we don't think our uh, you know average user is going to be interested in selling. They're going to be interested in stacking, so they're going to be interested in buying. But as as I just said, uh, it's true that many users are asking, and we are really strongly considering uh, putting it back in a in the next release. Absolutely, yeah. No, no, you're right. I mean, it's a good point. Maybe under we have under as I said at the beginning, we are in this as passionate individuals, not as professional. Maybe we should have. Maybe this is a mistake. Actually, we should have done it differently from the start. <laughs> I think uh, I think doing what you've done isn't like the end of the world, right? Like you you focused in on a specific niche or a group of people yeah. who wants to do one specific thing, and then you can obviously expand from there. I, I don't think it's unsensible to like expand your offering in that in that way uh, to make sure that you can deal with the the demand um, and the, and scale as well with what you have. I suppose um, question I've got is like so for example like the FATF that I think I think they they want like is I think it's any any more than five thousand. 
dollars, I think it is, on like any one user they want. And there's all these different like um, mm-hmm. I, I might be I might be outdated here, but there's all these different regulations around when they want people to be reported and things like that. Now, yeah. obviously, as you said, not a concern for you guys at the moment, based in Switzerland. Um, should the regulations change uh, and they do require more enhanced KYC for customers? If I was in Europe, et cetera, and I could use your service to just, it's super easy, super simple, straight to my own custody, I wouldn't really give a crap, to be frank, if I had to do KYC. I mean, it would be a bit of a shame, but whatever. But I'm sure yeah. there's some customers who uh, would be vehemently against it. Um, I guess, like, what... Because obviously at the moment you don't do any KYC because it's the vision is it's a no KYC option and it and it's smooth mm-hmm. and easy and simple. Uh, it, it, would you guys? I'm assuming you wouldn't just give up on the dream, right? Like, would you guys then look to do the it's, KYC yeah, yeah. at that point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over there, you have tapped into the one of the most uh, I would say strategic questions that are behind our our company. And uh, to be totally honest and transparent with you, is a question that we are asking ourselves as well. I, I mean, would we for sure exclude to perform KYC in the future if the regulation becomes more stringent? I don't know. To be honest, I don't think we would totally exclude it because there is a set of users that would use the service with KYC just because it's easier, just because it's simpler, and just because it's more immediate and pay attention to the needs of the of the of the user. But but uh, at the same time, I mean. As long as the regulation permits, even for very small amount, we would not require the, the, the KYC. Yes, I mean, and you, you know, in Switzerland, we already kind of, uh, um, can, we can already kind of anticipate that regulation will in the future probably reduce the threshold because it, all in all, if you think about it, the threshold is pretty high. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm no one to judge on any one personal uh, finances, but uh, in my world, let's say uh, 900 euro per 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 day are are I <laughs> in my world. Let's say. No, I agree. I agree, and I think even for someone who's wealthy, knowing it's KYC free, I mean, even still, that's that's a good amount. Like you can mm-hmm. yeah, 900 euros a day is pretty yeah. pretty substantial. I'd say it's pretty substantial. Um, yes. Yeah, I think it's yeah. pretty good going flexible. Um, Anyhow, I guess I mean, quite... uh, not excluding, but but yeah, it's a strategic question we need to ask ourselves in the in the very short future. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. No, because I, I know that obviously regulations are a, always a risk for any crypto company, and they're always developing pretty fast, especially yeah. now. Um, yeah. Now more eyes are on Bitcoin. Okay.